Did you know that ice is a rock? Yep. And in this episode, we will meet a scientist who studies ice cores drilled from ancient glaciers around the globe and unlocks the stories that are frozen inside. Welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. Hello, my name is Kane, and this is the rock for today. And you must be wondering, well, why is the rock ice? Ice is made from, from, from water that has structure when it freezes. There's also molecules in there. When water is heated, it turns from steam. When, 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 wa when water is, is frozen, the molecules free freeze and make a structure. Hey, you've been talking about this rock. Wow, Caden, thanks for introducing and explaining this very special rock to us today. Now, this thing is melting fast, so I'm going to put it back into this cooler and into the bag that it came from, this bag right here. And I'm going to set it right down safely on our rock spinner. I'll tell you more about that bag in a minute, but first, if you were wondering how ice could be a rock, well, i got to tell you, Caden explained it very well. Rocks are made of minerals, and minerals, like this ice, form when specific chemical compositions, like water, good old H2O, crystallize into a solid crystal structure in nature. As Caden explains, the molecules of water inside the ice get arranged into a very specific structure when it freezes. Now, I gotta be honest, I was afraid this ice would start to melt, so I got a picture of the ice right before we got it. See how it shines like the real crystal it is? So now that we know that ice is a mineral and a rock too, I guess the next question is, uh, who cares about collecting ice? And where in the world did this very special ice come from? I'll give you a hint. The writing on this bag says Denali. Now, I have a scientist friend, and she knows exactly where this ice came from, and she knows how to extract the stories that are hidden inside of it. Bundle up, because it's going to be cold where we're going. Hey, Hannah, how are you doing? Good, how are you? It's great to see you, everybody. We're with Hannah Brooks. Hannah is a PhD student here at the University of Maine in Orono, and you are studying, well, she's studying something that really is a rock, but most people don't think of it as a rock, do they? No, they don't. What are you studying? I'm studying ice. And why do you study ice? What does ice tell you about the stories of the Earth? Well, it's a really excellent archive. It records not only what's happening at the present, as ice is made, but it's recording all of the past as well. And so I study pollution, how humans have impacted the environment. As recorded in, in ice. So to start this, to start the whole project, how do you get ice and where do you get it from? Can you show us? Yeah, let's go. All right, sweet. So Ethan, this is what I wanted to show you. This is an ice drill. An ice drill? This thing is huge. It's actually pretty small by ice drill standards. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> um, the size is actually dictated by the kind of science question you want to ask. Okay. So the bigger the drill, the deeper you can go, and the older the ice that you can access. So you don't like go out someplace and just pick up a chunk of ice or snow on the surface. You're actually drilling down through a glacier or an ice sheet. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. So how does it work? So I'm going to show you on a smaller drill, okay? because um, it's a little bit easier yes. to tell exactly no how it works. So um, this is the kind of drill you would use if you were going to go back just a couple of decades. Um, okay. So it's hand, a hand drill. Um, you ready to hear how it works? Oh, let's do it. OK, ready? Whoa. All right, so <laughs> if I was going to drill with it, I'd drill all the way down, pull up to collect my sample. If you look down the barrel, do you see how it's hollow? Yeah, for sure. So that's exactly how I would collect my ice. It would be full of ice when you pull it up. Yeah. And you would shake it out, and your ice would come out. And then how do you get it home oh, once, once you've drilled it out? That's the excellent question, right? So we have these lovely tubes. Aha. They are hollow, just like our barrel of our drill is. A silver ice tube. I love it. So you're going to put your ice in it, and then stack these inside of these special freezer boxes. Okay. Those get helicoptered off 
the ice sheet or the mountain that you're working on. Wow. And then from there, they get flown and put into freezer trucks to make their way all the way here where we can research. Because they've, they've got to stay super cool so they don't melt before this they get back true. to the lab. true. They normally stay at negative 22 Celsius or like negative 15 Fahrenheit. Well, that sounds pretty cold, Hannah. It is pretty cold. So we've been to Antarctica, to Greenland, to Everest, to Alaska, to South America. Wow, all to study different questions. And you're doing your PhD here at the University of Maine. Is there a particular ice core that you've been studying? I've been working on ice cores mostly from collected in Denali National Park in Alaska. Wow, and why Alaska? So I work on questions about pollution and human change to the environment over time. Okay. But from Asia. So the pollutants created in Asia, they transport themselves in the wind across the Pacific Ocean oh, wow. and they land in Alaska and get recorded in the glaciers there. So you always have to be thinking about how is the wind picking up these particles and moving them across the planet? And then that is where you study, where those particles huh. are deposited. That's so cool. So you've told us, Hannah, where you've collected ice. You've told us how you collect ice and what you're trying to study. Can you show us some ice? Yeah. Let's go to the freezer and find some ice. To the freezer? Yeah, to All the right. freezer. So, Hannah, how did you get interested in the geosciences in the first place? Yeah, so as a kid, I was always really interested in being outside in the outdoors. I was like that kid that collected worms and saved them from puddles. Oh, okay, I collected <laughs> rocks, but worms and puddles sounds good too. Um, and I never really knew where that was going to take me. I was like yeah. never that kid who could tell you that I wanted to be whatever when I grew up. And yeah. kind of like accidentally found myself in geology. Huh. I've just kind of been like meandering along this path of following fluids inside the earth. I guess so. Yeah. So, and now you're focusing on the fluids that have been frozen temporarily into ice, right? Yes. Can we get to that freezer? Yeah, let's go check it out. All right, I want to see it. All right, so this is the freezer. This is, how cold is it in there? It's negative 24 Celsius. Negative 24 C? That <laughs> is really cold. We gotta keep it cold. And we're going in there. We're going in there. So we're gonna put on these lovely bunny suits to stay warm. <laughs> So, Ethan, this is the freezer. We have ice from Everest, from the South Pole, from Europe, and from Denali, where I'm working. So this is actually my ice core wow. from Denali National Park, and we can take a look at it. So this is how it comes packed from the glacier. This one is 222, and this ice core was 230 meters long. So this is almost at the bottom of the ice core. Wow. And we always put an arrow on it so we know which side is the youngest ice and which one's the oldest. So the arrow points up. Up Got to the it. youngest ice. Yeah. And what does this thing do? Oh, so this is a saw just like you would have at home. And we use it to be able to cut pieces of the ice core off. And so we can send it to different people so they can study different parts of the ice core. Okay. In fact, I have a little treat here for you. This is a piece of the Denali ice from two, 208. So it's roughly from 800 years ago. Oh and that's goodness. for you to take home. We can take this back for Every Rock Has a Story? Yes, you can. That's awesome. Real Denali ice from Alaska. This is fantastic. So I guess we should keep it in this cooler then, right? Yep. You gotta right. keep it cold on the way home. All right, tell you what, it's getting cold. Can we get back out of here and check out the lab? Yep, let's All do right. it. Let's go. Wow, Hannah, that was so cool. In fact, uh, literally cool. I'm still quite cold <laughs> from being in the freezer. So we've seen the ice, and this is where you actually do the analysis, right? Correct, yeah. yeah. So I have a, an example piece of ice to show you okay. how it works. So in this ice core, you can actually still see some of the layers. So each individual snowfall event gets compacted into a layer, and all that gets pressed down, and you can see it recorded as time in our ice core. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that ice core, put it right into the machine, and lock it up so it stays nice and cold. We Everything don't want our ice melting. Super cooled all the time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, and then we're going to drive a laser straight down the middle. So we're starting at the youngest time and driving progressively into older time and unlocking the chemistry that's recorded 
inside the ice. One layer of history at a time. Correct. That's incredible. And then with your own research, how far back in time do you study? So the oldest ice I'm studying is 340 CE. Okay. And then the youngest ice I'm studying is actually from 2022. Huh. So I'm expecting that we'll be able to see the effects of the COVID pandemic from the industries being shut on and off during the COVID lockdowns. Wow. So these ice cores preserve a record of even human activities over years to centuries and even longer than that. Correct. Incredible. Yeah. Hannah, this has been an amazing opportunity. Thank you so much oh, thank for being you. with us on Every Rock Has a Story. We'll see you guys back in the studio. Okay, so that's where our ice came from. Denali National Park is in Alaska. And that's where they drilled deep down into the glacier on the side of Mount McKinley to pull out that ancient ice. And this is a little chunk from that ice core that Hannah let us take home in this very cooler. Now let's welcome Caden back to the studio. Hey Caden, how are you doing? <laughs> so, what did you think about the story of this ice and about where it came from? Yeah, how do you get the temperature, temperature where it can keep it like frozen like all the way? Well, they fly out that helicopter to pick it up, packed all in coolers and freezer packs, then they put it in a truck and they drive it all the way across the country to Maine, where they put it in that giant cooler that I walked into and got that ice from. How do they know it looks like younger and, and, and older if, if they drill it out and they not have to draw the arrow? Well, they need to mark that arrow right when it comes out of the drill hole before they forget or before somebody moves it. Scientists have to pay really close attention and make notes and records and make those markings while they're doing their work so everything gets properly recorded. How old is the ice? Well, Hannah said that this Alaskan ice is about 800 years old, but she also mentioned other ice on planet Earth, like in Antarctica, where they have drilled ice perhaps as old as 2.6 to 2.7 million years old. So Caden, thanks again for being a part of this episode. Every time it rains or snows, that water falling from the sky brings with it a memory of the sky, the atmosphere from which it fell. It can remember how hot or cold it was, and it contains all of the stuff that was in the atmosphere at that time. Stuff that might have come from volcanoes, dust storms, outer space, or even the smokestacks and chimneys of human industry leaving our mark on the Earth. If the water melts, it loses most of its memory, but if it stays frozen for hundreds, thousands, or even millions of years, we can use it to reconstruct the past. That water dripping from Caden's hands when he held the Alaskan ice, that water hadn't been melted for 800 years. Who knew that a rock like this, a chunk of ice, could be so old? I want to thank Hannah for sharing her story and her ice with all of us, and I want to thank Caden for getting us started in explaining this icy tale. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> please don't, please don't. Uh, it's cold. Oh, no, that was a that was a complete failure. Uh, but most people, let's start that again, yeah. It just flopped on him. Really? My goodness. Apologies. Let's just, let's just start over. Keep rolling. Or... Look, I made a blooper for you. Yeah, that's right. You want to just keep rolling?